One of the biggest threads left after the Dame Lillard trade was official was where the Portland Trailblazers were going to be sending Drew Holiday. We now know that he's going to be on his way to Boston. We're going to grade the deal right after this. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis. NBA Central. What's going on, basketball fans? Welcome to another episode of NBA Central, your number one spot for everything basketball related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow the channel at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And we're going to talk strictly about the Drew Holiday trade. So this is a quick reaction to it. We'll probably have a more in the in uh, a depth conversation in regards to it. Well, uh, Drew Holiday is now on his way to the Boston Celtics. In this, the uh, Portland Trailblazers are going to get Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, a 2025, I'm sorry, 2024 first round pick and a 2029 first round pick outright. And so when you pair that with the picks that they got in the Dame Lillard trade, that means that the uh, Portland Trailblazers have now gotten three unprotected first round picks in, in this trade, two pick swaps. They also got DeAndre Ayton. They got Robert Williams, two centers in there that they can, uh, young centers that I guess they, they feel like they can mold. Um, and they also get Malcolm Brogdon. And, you know, I, I, what I had said that it was going to be important, I think, for the Portland Trailblazers to find some type of veteran kind of guard to help kind of guide the development of the younger two players and that they can rely on, right? They can teach them the right ways to play basketball. Now, they could also look to flip Malcolm Brogdon. If Malcolm Brogdon is proven to be healthy by the trade deadline, they can still flip Malcolm Brogdon for even more picks and assets back. So the Portland Trailblazers, overall, they have now turned this Dame Lillard trade into a nice round of assets back for them. And, you know, I feel like they've done overall really, really well in the case of moving on from their franchise player, one of, if not the best players in their franchise's history. It really depends on age and how you look at that there. I think Dame Lillard is definitely, though, one of the best players in that franchise's history. Now, the Boston Celtics get a point guard that is going to be able to replicate and bring a lot of what they lost in Marcus Smart, who's also a leader, who fits well as far as being uh, that kind of that in-between guy between uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Uh, and they still have at that forward position, they still have Kristaps Porzingis, right? I'm sorry, at forward slash center. They still have Al Horford there who can definitely play some for them as well. Now, it gets a little bit thin for them after that point in time, and they may look to go out and do some other things for big man depth. But overall, the Boston Celtics get uh, another player and what they need. And this is another time in a trade around the Portland Trailblazers where I feel like every team got exactly what they need from this trade. And so, you know, now you, you move Derek Wright to, to being on the bench, which is really solid for them overall, right? Uh, they still have some, yeah, not, not the best depth there, but they still have some depth overall on that team as well and players that they can definitely look uh, to use and, and utilize. And like I said before, like, this is a team that is now very heavy with their starting lineup in the Boston Celtics. They have some questions as far as depth. I want to be clear on that. But, hey, at least that starting lineup is extremely solid for them. And they get a player that's a veteran, is right along, along with their timeline. Uh, Drew Holiday also came out uh, earlier today and said that he would extend his contract if he's traded to a contender. So I'm sure they're going to be working out and looking for what they can get as far as extending to make sure they keep him under contract. But, Overall, the Boston Celtics in this, they go out, they get Kristaps Przingis this offseason. Yes, they they lose uh, players that, you know, they, 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 they that people liked on that team as far as Malcolm Brogdon and, and you know, uh, I'm sorry, not Malcolm Brogdon, Marcus Smart, a player that really helped set the identity. But they get another player right back that can also help with setting that new identity for this team and have and be that defensive stalwart that can also facilitate, move the ball around, play good defense, shoot the uh, hit the open three. They're gonna that they're gonna need as well. They still, like I said, overall still definitely have some depth issues after losing Grant Williams, losing Marcus Smart. But hey, this goes away in helping that. You now move, uh, you now move Derek White White to that to that bench, which I feel like is gonna probably be the best role for him. He can play multiple positions coming off there. Uh, that bench, he's really gonna gonna be kind of the star off that bench for this team as well. When you just look at the depth, but you know we'll see what the Boston Celtics can do. Right, they they very well could look to do something with their depth. Um, you know, by the trade deadline over the course of the season. I'm sure any buyout uh, candidates or anything are also going to want to come to the Boston Celtics amongst other teams as well. But, hey, the Boston Celtics get it done. The Portland Trailblazers get even more first-round picks back. Like I said, now getting three unprotected first-round picks in, in their overall trade package for Dame Lillard. They also now, you know, they have two uh, pick swaps as well for that. So it depends on what's going to be the better of that. They have a super young team now. They add Robert Williams, another young player that's had some injury concerns that the expectations aren't going to be heavily around him. Could they look to play him and and uh and um 
and DeAndre Ayton together some, maybe in some specialty lineups, things like that. But overall, that's not the biggest get for this for the Portland Trailblazers. It's the it's the first round picks they get back. They get they do have a young big man. They still have pieces that if they want to look to flip in in Robert Williams, in Malcolm Brogdon, they can look to flip that and still get more assets back. The Portland Trailblazers have been very smart in my estimation, over how they moved on from Dame Lillard. I want to hear from you guys, though. What do you guys feel about the trade overall? What do you think about Portland and how they've done in moving on from Dame Lillard and now that we kind of have the total assets back for now because they could get more back to still move some of the pieces they got today? Let me know all that down below. Make sure you guys are following the show at NBA Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything basketball related. And I'll see you guys the next time I feel like making a video. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.